Hey guys, it's Agosti Turmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so. by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the AR Foundation videos. I showed you in the past how we could basically create an AR Foundation experience by using Unity. And then this time around, what I'm going to be focusing on is scaling in augmented reality. So let's jump into Unity and let's start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in Unity, which is to implement a scaling feature for the AR Foundation. And what I have right now is I have a demo that I recorded while I was doing the experience. I actually implemented it and I want to show you what are some of the things that I added, how I coded it and basically walk you through the structure. So if we look at the demo, this is the demo with the statue and I'm basically scaling it down. I added a slider right here that allows me to change the size and basically I can select the statues and the, the circle that is surrounding them is basically telling us that that is the statue that I have selected. You can see that it's basically is huge. And I also have plane detection enabled and that's why that, that's what these grids are. And then I also made it really small. So you can see that I can, you know, I can scale it down and scale it up. So let me show you some of the project setup. And this is the continuation of my AR foundation videos. If you haven't watched the previous videos, make sure that you watch my AR, basically my augmented reality playlist. I'm going to put it in the description of this video so you can look at all the videos that I've been doing with AR foundation and other technologies. So what I have right now is I have, of course, I have my directional light, my AR, AR session, which I explained in some of the previous videos. I also have my AR session origin, which contains, of course, the AR session origin, IR plane manager. And this is the plane manager that I'm using to detect planes. And right now, this is basically using everything for the detection mode. So if you wanted to do vertical detection, you could do that. If you just wanted to do horizontal detection, you could do that. Or if you want to do them all or if you simply didn't want to do any detection because you may want to disable the detection, you can do that as well. The other thing that I have here is the AR Raycast Manager. I use this one in the script that, I, that I'm using to scale it because I need to do a Raycast on the objects in AR. So anytime you want to do Raycast in AR, you need to make sure that you have these, basically that component enabled. And I'll show you how I'm using that component in the script. And then I also have a script that I implemented that it's the one that is doing most of the work. It has basically a place prefab. This is going to be the dragon. So if we double click on it, I can show you what it is. It is basically the dragon that you're seeing in the scene getting resized. This is that dragon. And this component also has other features in them. So if we go and look at, let me go ahead and just select it and you can see what it has. I'm going to thought I had, I thought I had more features in them. And let me make sure, oh, okay, now I remember. So some of the features that I have, I have them in the actual nested object, which is the dragon statue. And right now this has a mesh render, of course, because we need to render the mesh. I also have a box collider. The reason why I have a box collider is because I need something to collide with when I'm doing a raycast. I also have a, place, a placement object, and I explained that in the other videos, but basically I'm using this to determine if an object is selected. I'm also using this to determine if I need to display an overlay and then basically an overlay with the text that I'm displaying. And when I say overlay, it's basically a text that shows right above the statue and I can do anything I like with that text. Right now, I'm just using it whenever I have it enabled and whenever I have it added, I'm using it to determine if something is selected or not selected. The other piece that is really important in here is the placement bounding area. This is that circle that you saw showing up when something was selected. And this script, you can also look at it basically, basically adds a mesh around it anytime some, something is selected. So that's what this piece is. So let me go back to the previous. So that's what the place dragon is. And then the welcome panel, of course, is going to be our tutorial here. I'm using that to show the user what they need to do to basically interact with the experience. I'm telling them to drag and drop or scale an object following the to follow the following steps and move your device around to map the area, select the place object to drag around the area. So you can basically select anything in the select anything. If you select an area that where there's a, there's not a statue, what's going to happen is we're going to instantiate a new statue and then place it at that location. As long as we have a vertical 
as long as we have an actual plane getting detected. And then if you want to unselect, you can basically select, you know, another another statue or either select another area and then it's going to create a new instance and therefore unselect the previous statue. Then some of the options that I have underneath here are whether I want to disable shadows, I want to disable lights. So these are all toggles, so I can disable or enable shadows. I can disable or enable lights. I can also disable or enable the detection. So if you wanted to see how things look without having the basically the, the vertical and horizontal planes showing in the scene, you can basically disable the detection and it'll hide everything and it actually doesn't do any detection, which means that there won't be any planes capture until you enable detection again. And then I have a scaling a slider that basically changes uh, the size of the selected object, the selected statue. And then I have this X because if I, so the way that I have it working right now, if this is showing, I'm not gonna allow you to select anything. It's only until you you close this panel that I'm gonna allow you to select. And that's because I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna have to, you know, mistakenly select a game object that, I was, that, that was beneath this. And I could have added more code, but I think for now that work, that implementation works really well. So that's what this is, and this is what some of the controllers on the canvas are. Let me go ahead and show you some of the coding that I have set up for this specific scene. And just by the way, I have multiple scenes and I also posted this in GitHub. This one that we're looking at, it's gonna be the status selection with scaling, that unity. So if you wanna find it, when you clone it, make sure you go into scenes and then it's gonna be the, la the last scene that I created. And then when you open it up, it's gonna look just like this one. Now, if we go back into, let me go ahead and double click here so that we open up the right script. So I'm just gonna walk you through some of the components in the script. I have a required component on the top because I need an AR Raycast Manager because we're Raycasting against objects that we're selecting. So that's one of the dependencies. And then this is a place prefab. You can change it if you like to. If you don't wanna do the statue that I have, you can do your own 3D model and just associate it with this. That works as well. Just make sure that it has the dependencies that I show you like the bounding box, the box collider, and then so on, and also the place object. So if you have those dependencies in there and then add it here, everything should just work. This is gonna be basically a reference to the welcome tutorial panel. This is gonna be a reference to the button that we're dismissing and everything in here that has that has the attributes serializable. Those are the things that we're going to expose so that whoever is setting up these, the scene can basically associate the game components then the slider is gonna be for scaling. I also have a toggle options button. This is so that I can toggle the menu that you saw on the very bottom, which is this one right here. And it's just a reference to that button. I also have the options reference, which is going to be this whole thing right here. I also have my AR camera, the place object that I have instantiated. This is also a reference to a touch position. So this is a last touch, touch position that I that I have set, and I'll show you how that is set below. I also have a Raycast Manager. So this is that dependencies that I show you on the very top. We're gonna get a reference to that in just a second. And then this is just so that I know that you're touching and holding so that I can drag basically the status around or the game object that you decide around. And then I'm also storing hits. This is gonna be the hits that we are basically getting from the AR Manager the uh, Raycast Manager. And then I also have a reference to the last selected object and also a reference to the place prefab. So it's just a property. And then on the awake method, I get a reference to the uh, Raycast Manager. And I also bound the dismiss method that I have right here to the onclick event. And when somebody clicks it, it basically executes this, which therefore hides the welcome panel. Then on the scalar size, on the scaling side, this is a listener to when somebody changes the scale value, it's gonna call this meta. So I'm basically saying if the last selected object is not null, meaning that you selected an object and the current object is selected and then I'm gonna allow you to scale. Otherwise, I'm not gonna allow you to scale because that means that you haven't instantiated an object, you haven't selected an object in the plane and you also haven't selected any object. So that's some of the checks that I do in here for validation. And then the toggle button is very simple. This is just a toggle between, you know, where when to show the options and when not to show the options. And if we are showing the options, and basically if the options active self is true, then what I do, I set the value to zero and then, or to always open and then X meaning that I close it. So 
the way that this is going to work, if, we're, if we have it closed, it's going to show the O. If we have it open, it's going to show the X. So that's what this code does. Then some of the, the heavy lifting here, it's going to be on the update. This is some of the things that I do to make sure that we don't allow any touches before you dismiss the welcome panel and before the options are not showing either. And then I basically just capture touch events. I, I also did this to make sure I told you that I wasn't going to do it, but I actually did it. This is just a method that allows me to basically, if I don't want to capture any any pointer events that are occurring on, on the UI. So if for, some, if for some reason I'm clicking on the UI, I don't want any objects beneath it to be selected. So this is this is what I'm using to do that. I'm, actual, I'm actually capturing the last touch position, which I'm getting right here. And this is a reference that I show you on the very top right here that I set to the default. And by the way, for those of you who haven't used default before, this is one of the new options on latest versions of C Sharp that allows you to basically set a default for a specific type. And the next thing that I do is I basically capture, okay, is the touch phase started? If it started, which means begin, then I start getting, you know, a reference to the ray. I, patch, I pass in the touch position and I determine what the ray is. Then I also declare basically a ray cast hit. And then I launch a ray by using physics that ray cast with a ray. And if I hit any object, I'll get something here. If I don't hit any object, this if statement is basically going to be skipped. If I hit an object, I basically get a reference to the last selected object by getting the placement object. And I told you that this was one of the dependencies. And then as long as the last selected object is not null, then I try to get all the other objects that are in the scene that have a placement object. The reason I do this is because I want to basically unselect those. So if I'm selecting a statue and I have another one selected, I want to make sure that I deselect the, I deselect the other ones. When I select the new one, that's what this code is doing. The other thing that I also do is I do an AR Raycast, an AR Raycast manager with a Raycast. So this is the AR implementation. And I pass in the touch position, the hits that I'm getting. And then also I tell the system whether I'm using a plane with polygon on the trackable time. And this is basically an implementation for you to be able to do Raycast. There's multiple things in here. If you wanted to do a face one, if you wanted to try a feature point, an image, you know, playing with bounds, infinity, and playing within polygons. This is the one that I saw in there in, in the examples from Unity. So this is the one that I'm using, and because I'm using a plane, and then I get the the basically the hit pose based on the hits that I'm getting. If for whatever reason I don't get any hits, then I know that I'm not basically touching a, a plane that I detected. So this is mostly for planes. If if there's not a plane, an AR plane that gets detected, I didn't put a horizontal plane in the view, and I'm basically not hitting it. That means that means that there's not a plane yet, so I can't instantiate anything. If I hit a plane, the plane that got detected, and the last selected object is null, then I know that I need to create a new instance. So this means that I'm going to be creating a new instance of the statue at a specific point on a plane, and then I basically pass in the place prefab, the hit post position, the rotation. And I also get the component of placement object out of the instantiated prefab so that I can set the last selected object. And then if I'm moving, if the touch face is moved, meaning that I'm moving my touch, basically I'm moving my finger around the screen and I'm holding on it, I do another raycast. And what I do here is I do exactly what I did here, except this time I'm going to make sure that the last selected object is not null and the last selected object is selected. This means that I instantiated an object already and that the object has been has been selected already, which means that I can now change the position and also that rotation. So that's mostly everything. The, the big thing for, for this video was the scaling. And this is this piece. And let me just reiterate it. I'm, I'm making sure that the last selected object is not null and that the last selected object is selected. If it's selected and you were to change the scale value, this is what I do to, to change the scale size which I use vector 3 that one and I multiply it by the new value. This probably needs to be improved because I, I want to make sure that I get the last scaling value. For that, this works and you can see the how it works. But I think in later videos, I'm going to improve it so that if you have, let's say, a statue that was that was enormous and you start the scene with that and then another ones that were small, if you do this right now, it's going to change the scaling size to the default value, which is not going to look realistic. I need to use the last scaling size of the of the object 
and then use that value as a starting point and then based on that value calculate what the scaling value should be so for now this this is fine this is a good example but later on I'll, I'll improve it so that it looks more more realistic so that's honestly everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you all right guys thank you much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what i just showed you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm basically posting information about what i'm doing in my office behind the scenes and also early access to source code Thank you very much, guys.